Hello and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. United States presidential hopefuls of both the Republican and Democratic parties address a pro-Israel conference in Washington, D.C., IPAC, during which they all reaffirmed their commitments to the Jewish state. The leader of the Lebanese Islamist group Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah, threatens to target Israel's nuclear installations if the IDF would wage a war against Lebanon. Heavy flight disruptions reported from Europe to Tel Aviv amid Brussels terror attacks. A year and a half after the hasty pullout of a UN military force from the Syrian Golan Heights, UNDOF, the acronym for the United Nations Disengagement Observer Force, is gearing for redeployment on the Syrian side of the security fence with Israel. The past weeks, UNDOF personnel conducted several tours of the installations and observation points on the Syrian Golan Heights that they had manned up until September of 2014. The United Nations intends to reposition the observer force, which is made up of soldiers from five different countries and the sites where it was deployed from 1974 to 2010. The Israeli security establishment has great interest in the return of UNDOF to the Syrian border as part of its efforts to create some kind of address to which the Jewish state will be able to approach in the chaos that prevails on the Syrian side of the fence. Israeli officials do not expect the UN peacekeeping force to actively intervene in case the warfare in Syria should spill over into Israel's direction, but the very presence of the UN on the ground creates, according to an Israeli defense official, a certain international guarantee to prevent hostile activity against the Jewish state. In addition, ever since the withdrawal of the Syrian army from the Golan, Israel has not, in effect, had a border with Syria since the latter state has fallen apart. The return of UN forces to the area serves as an indication of a future possibility of new arrangements along the Golan Heights' security fence. Now to another matter, the leader of the Lebanese Islamist group Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah, threatened to target Israel's nuclear installations if the IDF would wage a war against Lebanon. In an interview with Lebanese channel al Mayadeen, Nasrallah said that Hezbollah's missiles can reach every part of Israel, including petrochemical plants, biological research institutes, and nuclear reactors, which, according to the Islamist leader, are all on Hezbollah's list of targets. Nasrallah stressed during the interview that the next war with Israel, Hezbollah, would not have any red lines. The leader of the Iranian-backed group also lashed out against Saudi Arabia and Turkey, accusing both countries of obstructing efforts to reach a political solution to the conflict in Syria. Iranian-backed Hezbollah and Saudi Arabia have for years been on opposing sides of Syria's civil war. But relations have worsened in recent months, mirroring the growing hostility between Riyadh and Tehran, the region's two rival powers. Hezbollah's rhetoric against Saudi Arabia, however, comes primarily because of a declaration by the Gulf Cooperation Council, which consists out of Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman and Qatar, in which they define the Islamist Hezbollah as a terrorist organization. Now to the United States, where presidential hopefuls of both the Republican and Democratic parties addressed a conference in Washington, D.C. of the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee, APAC, 
which is a powerful pro-Israel lobbying group. One vow all candidates had in common was a commitment to Israel and peace in the Middle East. The first to address the pro-Israel lobby was Democratic presidential frontrunner Hillary Clinton, who attacked her main rival, Republican Donald Trump, for taking a neutral stance toward Israeli-Palestinian peace efforts in the past, and a glimpse of a possible general election battle expected to be held between the two presidential hopefuls. Yes, we need steady hands. Not a president who says he's neutral on Monday, pro-Israel on Tuesday, and who knows what on Wednesday, because everything's negotiable. <laughs> that America can't ever be neutral when it comes to Israel's security or survival. We can't be neutral when rockets rain down on residential neighborhoods when civilians are stabbed in the street, when suicide bombers target the innocent. Some things aren't negotiable. And anyone who doesn't understand that has no business being our president. In response to Hillary Clinton's allegations, Republican presidential frontrunner Donald Trump vowed an unbreakable U.S. alliance with Israel if he is elected president in November. Trump called himself a lifelong supporter and true friend of Israel as he addressed a pro-Israeli lobby. I speak to you today as a lifelong supporter and true friend of Israel. I'm a newcomer to politics, but not to backing the Jewish state. Trump took the opportunity to lash out at the United Nations, which he said was not a friend to Israel, stressing that if he is elected to be president, the United States would veto any attempt to impose resolutions against the Jewish state. The United Nations is not a friend of democracy. It's not a friend to freedom. It's not a friend even to the United States of America, where, as you know, it has its home. And it surely is not a friend to Israel. When I'm president, believe me, I will veto any attempt by the UN to impose its will on the Jewish state. It will be vetoed 100 percent. The Republican frontrunner emphasized that the United States would stand by Israel in the negotiations with the Palestinians will officially recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. The Palestinians must come to the table knowing that the bond between the United States and Israel is absolutely, totally unbreakable. They must come to the table willing and able to stop the terror being committed on a daily basis against Israel. They must do that. We will move the American embassy to the eternal capital of the Jewish people, Jerusalem. Now, with regard to the terror attacks in Brussels, the Israel Aviation Authorities announced following the terror attacks in the Belgian capital that there may be disruptions in flights from Europe to Tel Aviv and called on people traveling to Israel to stay up to date for any unscheduled changes. That said, all flights from Belgium to Israel have been cancelled and many flights from Western Europe to Tel Aviv have been delayed. Thank you for watching us. You can also watch us at tv7israelnews.com or tv7.fi. For any comments, please send your emails to israelnews at tv7.fi. For more updates from Israel and the region, please join our Facebook page at tv7israelnews. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time. In order to donate to TV7 Israel News, please follow these simple steps. 
First, press the Donate logo, located at the bottom left side of TV7 Israel News Facebook page, or on the Donate tab at the head of the page. Then insert the amount you'd like to donate, and fill in your credit card information. Just like this. And press Review Donation and Continue. After reviewing your donation details, please press Donate to finalize your donation. That's it! Your donation is now complete, and an email with your donation details has been sent to your email address. You can also print your donation receipt by pressing the link here. Thank you for supporting TV7 Israel News.